Washing away the blood from ambulances used to carry the dead and injured was not an easy task. But what the Garissa University attack has done will be even harder to erase within Kenya. This is a new strategy for Al-Shabaab, pitting Kenyan Muslims against Kenyan Christians. Students came under attack early in the morning as they slept. Four Al-Shabaab gunmen stormed the university compound, separated Muslims from non-Muslims, and shot dead 148 people in cold blood. Al-Shabaab, seen here training in Somalia, is Al-Qaeda's branch in East Africa. When I talked to the group's spokesman on the phone, he was unapologetic about targeting students. And he told me Garissa is not Kenya. In the past, Al Shabaab demanded Kenyan forces who invaded Somalia three years ago leave the country. That has now changed. The group wants Christian Kenyans to leave Garissa and other Muslim areas. They say it's rightfully their land, and this is having an effect across Kenya. That message appeals to some, especially young Muslim men. It's thought the militants who carried out the Garissa University attack were Kenyan nationals. I have also been told that the gunmen were at this training camp I filmed. They were members of the Al-Shabaab class of 2013. <laughs> The alleged mastermind of the massacre is this man. His name is Dulia Dain and he's from Garissa. The Kenyan government has put 100,000 pound bounty on his head. Dulia Dain was the headmaster of this madrasa before joining Al Shabaab. We managed to talk to one of his former students who didn't want to be identified. <laughs> In Garissa, politicians would like to show a united front, but it's a divided city. This bridge is the boundary. On this side of the river is a predominantly Muslim area. On the other is a safe haven for Christians. And the latest attack by Al-Shabaab is likely to drive this community farther apart. That is already happening. Muslims feel they are persecuted by the Kenyan forces. And Christians no longer feel safe in this region where they are the minority. So they are fleeing in big numbers. Rose is one of those Christians. She came here seeking a better life and found a job as a hotel receptionist. Since the Al-Shabaab attack, she has been desperate to leave and is confused about what it means to be Kenyan. So you're not coming back to Garissa? No, never. Never, ever. I'm not coming back. You never know where they're Maybe they're planning another attack. When you say Kenyans, are they not Kenyans? They are, but you know, I don't understand these people, that's the... I don't understand them. So you think the locals here in Garissa don't see themselves as Kenyans? That's the problem. Rose is suspicious about people around her. She faces a tense journey through Kenyan countryside, and she has several hours before she can put the fear behind her. The following day, we meet her again. She's happy to be home. I'm not scared, I'm not stressed. 
someone can bang the door I open peacefully. <laughs> and she is chosen to make a statement by wearing a Kenyan rugby shirt. I feel I'm in Kenya. I feel more of Kenya than when I was in Garissa. Once we have already suffered the disaster. Rose may now be relaxed, but the Kenyan government cannot afford to be. Weeks after the university massacre, Al-Shabaab have vowed to continue their brutal project to its bitter conclusion. Those in power in Kenya will need a better strategy if they are to avoid a messy war that risks tearing this country apart.